There's a new number one in the college football top 25, and it is the Oregon Ducks. 59 of the 61 first place votes in the AP top 25, 51 of 53 in the coaches top 25. And I think the Oregon Ducks can thank the Georgia Bulldogs for that, Indeed. everybody. Which we can talk about Texas Georgia in a little bit, but uh, yeah, Ducks. Well, I mean, yeah. we could talk about that Texas Georgia game right now because that is okay. the reason why uh, mm-hmm. Oregon is number one. We talked about this last week, right? Mm-hmm. There was some uh, fans of Oregon. Hell, I thought it would be uh, the part that was uh, astonishing to me was the media members on the national level that were saying, hey, Oregon should be getting a little bit more credit because they have the best win in college football this year. They should be number one. But last week, the whole thing was, dude, just let this whole thing play yeah, out. Because Texas had done nothing to fall down. They beat the brakes off Oklahoma yeah. in the Red River rivalry. And look, if, if they shouldn't be unseated as number one until they do something that says you shouldn't be number one. It was week seven, and right now, like it is great. Oregon being ranked the number one team in the country, they're getting a, uh, they're getting their flowers for having the most impressive resume of the unbeaten's to this point. Right when you look at their strength of schedule and the strength of opponents of the unbeaten teams, they are. I, I mean, I don't think it's particularly close. I think Oregon has played. Uh, I was reading the Ross Dellinger article today. Oregon has played the twenty eighth toughest schedule. Mm-hmm. And Penn State's is 57th. Yeah. And, I mean, that that's the other one that you're going to look at. Miami, I think, has played the 45th toughest mm-hmm. schedule. And then uh, BYU has played the 32nd toughest schedule. Yeah. BYU's not getting enough credit. No. Uh, but they don't have that most, marquee win. Yeah, and most of the top Oregon ten, has a marquee yeah, win in there. Most of the top 10 teams in the country have not played a difficult schedule. No. Um, but it, that's, it gets more difficult during the final five weeks. No different than any other year in college no. football. And that's why, you know, being the number one ranked team in the country is a is a great thing for your fan base. It, it means nothing right now. It doesn't now. mean anything until the final three weeks. Look, at 6.45 tonight, Dan Lanning will have his weekly press conference, mm-hmm. and it'll be the first one that he speaks to the media, first time he speaks to the media since Oregon has been ranked number one. And you can almost, like, you, you telegraph this one. It doesn't matter. All the way to the bank. Yeah, uh, I guess that's cool for everybody else, but for yeah. us, it means nothing. We're just going to keep on rolling along. It is really good, though, to be acknowledged as the number one team in the country, and it's been a really long time since Oregon's been ranked mm-hmm. number one. I mean, it's uh, 2013, I think, was the last time Oregon was ranked number one. It's That's a that's a long stretch. It's a decade. Oh, can right. I say something? Yes, mm-hmm. And I don't want to poop on it. This is not meant yeah. to poop on anything. No, poop Because I'm, I'm not a party, poop, party pooper. I don't poop at parties. Uh I feel like somehow this will get pooped on because of the down years that like Alabama and Georgia are having. And so people will look at this as a year where like, oh, well, somebody else had to go be number one because those guys had a down year. So it's not really the same. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, who cares? No, no, no. Yeah, I know. I'm I know. Not... I know. I know that that's going to that's going to be. But look, in the grand scheme of things. We every year you have that revolving door around the top mm-hmm. uh, of teams, and um, I, again, being ranked number one at week eight, or heading into week nine, I guess it is mm-hmm. after eight weeks, it's great, it's fantastic. But it does yes. not really mean anything unless you finish this thing off, and yeah. that's the hardest thing to do, yeah, is now you legitimately have the bullseye on your back, they have done everything in their power to earn. The number one ranking, mm-hmm. right? Which is you beat everybody on your schedule. You. you beat Ohio State. Mm-hmm. That is a that's a hallmark win. Hang your hat on that kind of win. But this is just kind of the way that it is. And you, I think the bigger thing, if you're looking at the landscape of college football right now, there are four first round buys in the college football playoff. They only go to the four highest rated conference champions. Mm-hmm. Right now, what you can say that Oregon has done is that they are positioning themselves to have a shot at one of those because everybody else is just eating each other alive. Yeah. This is why I said when Oregon beat Ohio State is they have put themselves to have a chance to be one of the top two teams in the country. Um, if, they, if they continue handling business, yeah. If, if if they went out between now and the end of the season, they will be in the conversation for one of the top two spots. And I think That's that simple. one thing Oregon has done, and I thought Friday night kind of highlighted this, is that. Oregon is, they have avoided the stub your toe slip up games, mm. right? 
they came out sluggish early in the season, and when your wins are not as impressive as the what people had hoped them to be, um, meaning you win by 10 against Idaho, you have a close one against Boise State. Mm-hmm. Oregon had offensive line issues that they were rectifying. Since then, they have played like one of the best teams in college football. Uh, can we, just for my own purposes and maybe some others out there, the – Four first round buys, like you just said, I believe go to the top four highest uh, ranked uh, uh, conference, conference champions. champions. Yeah. Not just the power four conference champions. All of them. Well, because it could be, could it not be a, a group of what have you? Yeah. Champion you, that well, pops I in? mean, right and, now that would be Boise State. Right. Is, is who that would be, but they need to be ranked higher than the Big 12. Or, or the ACC, ACC. but it could happen. It very, well, yes. very well could happen because I've heard people say that no, it's only the the Power Four conferences. Yeah, that, no, that it yeah. is the four highest rated conference champions. That's what I thought. Just wanted to make yeah. that clear. That is why Notre Dame cannot be one of those mm-hmm. teams ever. Yeah, join a conference, dudes. Yep, um, but it does kind of. And right now, it would not be Boise State. Right now, it would be an ACC Big Twelve team because they're right. they're still there. But it could happen. It. It very easily could happen. And I think this is where you go down the road of do not stub your toe. You've afforded yourself a little bit of leeway because just look around the landscape of college football. It is really hard to go unbeaten. I mean, we talk about it like it's easy, but because every year we have a Georgia, Alabama, or a Clemson, or an Ohio State, or a Michigan that does it, it is so damn hard to do. And we're we're at entering week nine. There's only 10 teams left in all of college football that are unbeaten. Mm-hmm. And if you if you look at it from, all right, who are these teams and where are they from? Oregon, Penn State, Miami, Iowa State, BYU, Indiana, Pitt. Seven of them are from Power Force conferences. Okay? Three of them from the Big Ten. Yep. And then you have uh, two from the Big 12. Two from the ACC. Mm-hmm. What's missing? It's the SEC. Mm. The SEC. Well, and they're going to tell you it's because oh, we we all play nothing but good teams, mm. pal. Right? It's really hard to go unbeaten, yeah. especially in this era and this this landscape, because you look at it and as you go, players have been flattened out across the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The competition I mean, is, is is it's it's the it's the most quote unquote equal that it's been. And this is where the transfer portal, the people that have railed against the transfer portal the most are the ones that have been adversely affected Mm -hmm. by it, right? Nick Saban in Alabama, it was because he couldn't stockpile the talent anymore. Kirby Smart. Kirby Smart, it's because you can't stockpile that talent. Oh, everybody doubted us. Nobody believed in us. That was a hell of a win. That was a hell of a win. And you know what? Kirby may not be wrong, but he sounds... Well, maybe not this week. ...absolutely but... ludicrous because mm-hmm. with Oregon being number one, by the way, if you don't know the rest of the top 25, Oregon is one, Georgia two. Penn State has jumped up to third. Uh, they are 6-0 and on the season, and they take the meat of their schedule is still ahead of them with Wisconsin on the road this weekend. Then they have Ohio State at home. Uh, so they've got two big ones in a row that they need to... Uh, figure out before you know they they start getting annoyed. They have a Ohio State Michigan problem. They mm-hmm. kind of have for a lot of years. Uh, Ohio State is fourth. Texas is fifth with Miami at six, and then Tennessee, huge win over Alabama, and they are melting down in Tuscaloosa. That game, right now. Ooh, they are gutsy. They're about ready to lynch Kalen DeBoer, aren't they? They are. F- Five and two, mm-hmm. and it is like the world is crashing down on them. And their losses are to who? You hate to see it. Well, uh, uh, Vanderbilt. I would say Tennessee. In, 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 in Tennessee. The, state of, the Tennessee. state of Tennessee owns Alabama right now. Not buying, sitting well. Buying real estate. LSU is eighth, Clemson ninth, and Iowa State rounds out the top ten in college foosballs. Top 25 at the AP poll.